This week on the Computer Chronicles, the battle between the PC and the TV. We'll show you how to surf the net on your television set using AOL TV. We'll demonstrate the coolest new box from Microsoft called Ultimate TV. We'll show you the future of e-commerce. It's on your television set. And remember the Mosaic web browser? Well, it's now the Mosaic Navigator for your television set. And the future of entertainment on the web. We'll show you TV quality movies on your PC. The battle between the PC and the TV. It's all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by PC to PC, the online computer migration service from PC First, moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one. Additional support is provided by Upside Events, presenting the Digital Lifestyle Revolution Conference, where people and technology intersect. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. For years, amidst all the talk of PC TV convergence, there has been a debate over which platform would become the dominant one for consumer access to information, entertainment, and shopping. Would it be the PC, or would it be the television set? Well, there is a lot of evidence out there that the TV set is gaining ground right now. Today, we want to show you new ways that you can use your television set to do things you used to do on your computer. And here to get us started is Charlie Trichler of Liberate Technologies. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Stuart. Now, a lot of people may not have heard of Liberate, but you guys make the software that goes inside this box, which is the AOL TV box. So if you're watching AOL TV or using AOL TV, it's really Liberate exactly. stuff under the hood, right? Exactly. Now, what does that mean to do AOL TV? I know AOL when I log on on my computer and I do that. What, what is, why would I want to do AOL on my television set? What AOL has done is brought a lot of the services from AOL on the PC side over to the television, but formatted it appropriate for the TV. Right, such so as? Things like Instant Messenger, for instance. Um, here's an example of Instant Messenger where I can click down into my Instant Messenger interface, and it uses the same buddy list, the same things that I'm used to using on my PC, I can now use on the television as well. So if I wanted to start a chat with Matt, for instance, I can just start one up and say, hey there. All right, so you're watching real TV here. This is live TV, and you guys are maybe going to talk about what's on the TV show you're watching. Exactly. But he doesn't have to be on, the, on AOL TV, does he? A good point, because here when he responds with, hey, what's up, he could be doing that from a PC, from an okay. AOL TV unit, or from a phone. Uh, it's right. the concept of using the AOL service across this space. Uh, and we could chat and keep going on and have multiple chats going as well with other Now, is this the, are you the same AOL person and identity that you were in, in normal AOL? Same email, same chat, all of those pieces are exactly okay. the so same. So what else could you do besides instant messaging? Um, well, so that's one example, but if I wanted to go off and get to, say, more information about shows, you know, really looking at the TV side of things, I can use what AOL has done with keywords. So, mm -hmm. for instance, I can type in baseball on my PC and go to some of the baseball scores. I can do the same thing here on my television. So typing in baseball, I go off to a channel that AOL has created where I still get my TV signal, but I also get all the content from their creative side. Okay, so you're really doing two things at once now. You're watching TV, only you've shoved it up in the corner, mm -hmm. and you're, you're doing some other work which you might have done on your computer before. And this is all coming from the Internet. So the look and feel and all mm -hmm. the information, all the stories that you see on your PC, you get the same. But it's obviously reformat, I guess you're on the TV, and it's the text is not as dense and so on. Exactly. Thinking about it's a TV viewer, not a PC user right. in this case. All right, so what else could you do besides, you know, check sports scores or whatever in terms of using the, the internet capability? Uh, for instance, one of the things that they can do is the concept of, well, what's on television? You know, get okay. that data from the internet, so by clicking I can go to what's called an electronic program guide, which shows me all of the different shows that are on. Here AOL has organized it by different content interest points, mm -hmm. but then down at the bottom I've got the actual data itself, what's on channel 2, channel 4, etc., organized by category. I could go and look at something in more detail, like there's The Simpsons on at mm -hmm. 4 o'clock. Let's find out more detail about that show. Here it is about Homer trying to do something in Springfield. But that information is coming through the Internet using the service that AOL already All has. All right. The last thing I want to ask you about is video on demand. And we've mm -hmm. heard about this for years. And it's like the dream that you could actually go over your TV and watch any movie you want, anytime you want to watch it and have control sure. of it. And you are actually implementing that through AOL TV now? Um, not just through AOL TV, but across all of our customers that are looking at the concept of video on demand. Okay. Which is the concept of having VCR capabilities, but instead of the VCR sitting in your living room or a personal video recorder, okay. it's so a This is like one of these somebody. TiVos or replays, only all the functionality is out somewhere else. You're just sitting there with your remote control. It exactly. doesn't matter how big your hard drive is. Exactly. So I can show you, take a look at that. Sure. If we take a look at a service of, of what that can look like, let me switch over to our, our movie mm -hmm. here. Here I've got input where I've got Stars Encore, one of the movie providers today, where they're playing their library of movies, but as a TV viewer, I've got full control using my remote. I can pause it, 
Um, so to actually pause that video mm -hmm. in real time, I can rewind it back to the beginning. I can go backwards, hit play again, and actually start that movie playing and, and take a look at that. Now, what Stars Encore brings to the table is a full library of movies. So if I you know, didn't want to watch, in particular, a comedy movie, mm -hmm. you know, here with Austin Powers, I can go off and look at some other uh, concepts and other venues. So here I've rewinded to the beginning, but if I wanted to go off and look at the other categories of movies that Stars Encore offers, I can just pop that down. And again, that same interface, using my remote control, um, and let's go off and click on action to see what action movies we have available. Can you bring in the web again and actually look at a movie review that might be on the internet? Exactly. So here I've got Enemy of the State. Let's go off and take a look at that movie. Uh, but in addition, to your point, I can get some reviews. Okay. Choose the review that I care and about. And you can actually a, drill down and actually read one. Click on Chicago Sun-Times, yeah. which is Roger Ebert. This is coming from their website. So they, okay. you know, Roger Ebert didn't have to change anything. It comes back and gives me that, gotcha. that look and feel. All right, thank you very much. No problem. All right, well, for years, Microsoft was identified with the PC as the platform of choice for doing everything. But that has changed as Bill Gates and company have expanded and moved on to other platforms like the television set. And one of the newest technologies to exemplify that is something called Ultimate TV. And here to show it to us is Tim Booker of Web TV Networks. How you doing, Tim? Hi, Stuart. Let's explain the relationship here. There's Web TV, there's Ultimate TV, and there's Microsoft. It's kind of all right. the same bag now, right? Exactly. We started as, as Web TV about six years ago. And uh, we were acquired about four years ago by Microsoft. Um, we started with the goal of enhancing television, bringing that to consumers, bringing the Internet on TV first. Right, which was the Web TV idea. Right. And then we did interactive TV uh, about four years ago. And our latest uh, invention, Ultimate TV, is all about building on things we've done in the past um, with uh, a lot more capability. So here all I'm right, So we're watching a TV show. We're watching CSI on CBS. Exactly. And what's all the other stuff that's going on? So this is an example of interactive TV where I'm watching CSI, but I have the ability to go and look at things like the Crime Lab or Las Vegas, uh, more information about that. Mm -hmm or clicking on uh, personnel and getting more information about a certain actress or actor. Um, now, this is uh, information about Catherine Willows, not the actress, but the character. The character in the story. Yeah, so it really draws you into uh. the show, um, making believe So it's again, this real. is the kind of thing where, where normally I'd be watching TV and they say, oh, go to, go to CBS.com or something, go to the website to find out more about this. Right. Instead of having to be on my computer and watching my TV over here, right. I can do the same, all of it together on the it TV It brings show. it together in one experience with a remote control. So I'll show you a little bit about uh, Internet on TV, which is what uh -huh. we started with. And if I just hit one button on the remote control, we come to the web home, where you can do things like email, community. So again, basic web stuff on the TV side. Exactly. I mean, if I click on email, for example, I can send email to anyone uh, you know, in, in the mm -hmm. world. So it's all standards-based uh, technology that we have here. Um, also, I can do chat, um, right. messaging, uh, you know, your favorites, searching. Got it. Um, now, now, what about sort of the, the PVR, personal video recorder aspects? I mean, one of these ultimate TV is also sort of like one of these TiVos or replays, right? Only you have more capability. Exactly right. I, uh, I just went over to the TV home now, just changing the channel. And um, at the TV home, which is actually where you start when you first turn this on, you have the guide, which is an interactive electronic programming right. guide up to two weeks. Uh, searching capabilities uh, to find what you want to watch, where you store your shows and my shows, and then of course taking you back to the web home. If I go into the live TV, um, here's the Kentucky Derby, um, I can simply hit pause and pause live TV. Okay. And when I pick up where I left off, I can even fast forward it back to and live. And what's really happening, all of this is sort of being cached on a hard drive somewhere, so you're really watching off a hard drive and that's why you can manage it. Exactly right, exactly right. So I can, I can do some other things, too. For example, I can bring up PIP, which is uh, something that's very uh, new. It's never been done before in any digital TV platform. So I can actually have a game in the, uh, in the PIP and uh, you know, some other show in the, in the background. I can even swap them. I can even pause both of these channels, too, at the same time, which is very difficult to do because now I'm actually dealing with four audio and video Because streams. you're really recording real time That's the right. two channels, and you're watching a paused still version of both channels exactly at the same right. time. Exactly right. Um, one of the things that you can do with the uh, multiple uh, tuners is record uh, shows that are on at the same time. Uh -huh. So you can so, record two shows at once? Exactly. So I can go into the guide, for example, and record uh, uh, any, any show that I want. For example, uh, I can record... Uh, uh, CNN here, uh -huh. um, and uh, maybe Sports Center here. When I click the record button, the little red dot shows up, indicating that right, that's going right. to be recorded. I want to ask you finally about one other thing. One of the nice things about having the sort of computer smarts inside your TV are things like you can control kids' access to certain kinds of rated programs, right? Right. 
Right. How would you do so that? So I can actually uh, do things like uh, set locks and limits mm -hmm. on, on the shows. If I go back to the home Joining here, the this little padlock, if I click on that, I can then set different know. rating limits the for television way. or for movies. I can block certain channels, I can set spending limits, and then I can password protect that yeah. uh, so that uh, members of your family can be protected. Let me ask you, we just saw AOL TV, we're looking at Ultimate TV, are they sort of the same idea? I mean, you guys head to head on what you're doing? Well, we've, we've done interactive TV for several years, and um, we feel with Ultimate TV, we've actually taken it to the next uh -huh. level, bringing together um, all of the uh, previous work, uh, similar internet kinds of things, messaging mm -hmm. kinds of things, interactive TV, but on top of that, the multiple tuner recording capability. Uh, and you pay for the box and you pay for the service. Right. Okay, thanks a lot, Tim. Thanks, George. All right, coming up next, T-Commerce, turning your television set into a shopping mall. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Television is a powerful advertising medium. It can deliver strong, persuasive messages, but it hasn't been very good at transactions, actually letting you buy products. For that, you had to get up and go to the phone or log on to the web, but not anymore. Here to show us the future of T-Commerce is Scott Blankstein of QPass. Hi, Scott. T-Commerce stands for television commerce as opposed to e-commerce, which we think of on the net. Explain the whole idea. I mean, what, what are you talking about? Actually buying stuff while you watch TV without going to the web? That's right. Today we've got about six billion dollars being spent annually on people buying things related to watching television. So they're watching an infomercial and they get up and go to their phone. Or, or like a QVC right, or something. Right, a QVC where they're actually watching a shopping channel as opposed to watching programming and right. buying something. So we think there's a tremendous opportunity for growth if you can integrate the opportunity for shopping into the buying, the watching experience. So, so take, take that sort of internet act, interactivity and bring it over to the television set in a shopping right. mode. All right, you, we have, we're watching a TV show right now, and give us an example of how this sort of T-commerce thing would work. How do I buy stuff off my TV set? Right, okay, so what we're seeing here is a show called Health E-Style, and it's an alternative medicine lifestyle show, and they're talking about particular products, mm -hmm. and one of those products is some lavender oil that they'd like to make available for purchase. So what they've done is they've put up this banner that allows you to make a purchase directly from so the So that lets me know something is buyable right, right. now. Right, okay. something is buyable, special offer. Right? So I click on that using just my remote, no keyboard involved, no telephone, and it says, here's what we're offering you, this lavender essential oil, $8.65, and I click the buy now button, just enter a pin for security, hit the submit button, just like I would on a PC, and it tells me, and you bought it. I bought it, right? We've already stored a default so shipping method, a default, a default right, payment method, right. um, so I don't have to select any of that. I don't have to type any of that in at the point I want to purchase. It's a very quick impulse buy. And I can go back to watching television. Hmm. Right. All right, now, I mean, that was sort of a quick, you have to have known a lot of information about that. Can you do the sort of Internet-style browser shopping, look around, see what's available, and, and sort of make some decisions while you're watching this? Right, so now we can see that it's the end of the show, uh -huh. and at that point, maybe I've got some time to think, and there were a number of things I'm interested in that they were talking about. So I'm going to go, and they've left this little uh, interaction icon on the window. So there's the stuff you can do. Right, to tell me that there's still something I can interact with. In this case, I can take a look and go shopping at, as you just described, okay. a mall, right? Yeah. So here we're talking about a featured product, uh, a health handbook that's relevant to the show, and they've also got some other categories to purchase from. Um, we're gonna go look at uh, the antioxidants. Mm -hmm. um, I'll select that and see what they've got available. Uh, the first thing that they've decided to feature is some antioxidant vitamins. So you can go buy some vitamin pills right. or something. Right, go buy some vitamins. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll take one of those and add it to my shopping cart. Okay, it looks like web shopping. Just here. exactly like web yeah. shopping, very similar. Very but you don't have to know how to use the computer? Don't need to use a computer, don't need a keyboard, again. Yeah. Um, and I'm done, all I wanted was okay. the vitamins. I'll check out. Now, I saw account information there, one of those menus you popped up. You can manage your account the way you would on a website on the Internet, too? That's right. So once I go through, you can see I can make this purchase pretty simply. Again, I've got a little more choice here because I'm shopping. Right. Go through. I've now completed the purchase. And I go back to take a look at my account area. You see that, mm -hmm. again, for security purposes, in a multi-user oh, household, in. we ask you to put in your PIN before any sort of sensitive mm -hmm. information is revealed. Um, 
So now I'm at a sort of an account management area. I can so you go. can set up your profile and what credit card you want to use and where you want the shipping to be sent to, et cetera. That's right. I can also take a look back. Let's say it's been a couple days and I haven't received that lavender oil in the mail. And I'm wondering, uh, where is that? And, and, and oh yeah, by yeah. the way, I also bought those vitamins. So I can go back and take a look at my purchase history. Okay. Oh, there's the vitamins, right? First thing I bought right there. Take a look and say, oh, I just bought it recently, yeah. right? It's five to eight days. I don't expect it yet, but there's my order number in case okay. I want to track it. Scott, last question. You guys are QPASS. You're sort of the enabling technology here. Right. I mean, when and where will I actually be able to do this? I haven't seen this yet. We've got announced relationships um, with AT&T Broadband, and we have unannounced relationships with a couple others. And so we're, coming we're to involved a cable in operator near you. That's right. As soon as they roll out the service, gotcha. we'll be part of it. Scott, thank you very much. Thank you, Stuart. All right, well, T-Commerce is just one example of what is more broadly called interactive TV or ITV. And to add interactivity to your television set, you need kind of some computer smart software usually embedded in a set-top box. And perhaps the most advanced ITV technology is coming now from a company called Canal Plus U.S. Technologies. And joining us to explain this all is their CEO, Jean-Marc Racine. How are you? Good afternoon. How are you? Uh, first of all, tell us, you guys are basically a European company. Canal Plus started in France, and you, you've recently established, I guess, operations here in the States. We know there's a lot more of this ITV stuff in Europe than there is in the States right now. What, why is that? What's going on in Europe that we can learn about interactive TV here? I think that Europe embraced ITV uh, starting in April 96 with our parent company Canal Plus. And the way ITV wa was used in the early days was truly to differentiate the content from one service provider to another. And everybody can buy content, but not everybody can package it in an appealing way and add interactivity on top of it. Right. And that really drive ITV penetration in Europe in the early days. Okay. Now, how do you guys define ITV? I mean, what are we looking at right here? How are you adding Internet-style uh, interactivity to, te to the television experience? Well, we believe that ITV is not only about putting Internet content on the television set. Looking at that splash screen as an example, you've got here 12 video channels, and by moving the cursor using the remote control, I can just pick up the sound of the selected channel, as you can see. So I know yeah, this is like browsing, but browsing television stations instead of websites. Correct. This is just going through the video offering of a specific uh, network operator. Uh -huh. And now, should you want to go and watch a specific channel, here's a sports channel, you're just one click away from going and switching to that specific channel. Okay. Showing here is uh, actually an interesting version of a soccer game, where on, th on the bottom left, you can see an icon saying that that specific broadcast is interactive. Okay. One click away again, and I can, for example, look at some player information of that specific game. Or I can say, well, what is the score? I'm just joining mm. uh, that specific game. Even better, and talking about embedding and mixing interactivity together with content, which the result is enhancing the entertainment experience, I can now go to the camera selection. And I'm watching the main camera, but I can decide to go huh. and to uh, watch camera number one. We've all heard about this for a long time. You can actually do it now. It's being done on millions of boxes uh, huh. uh, today, and it's coming, uh, I believe, to the, to the US as well. Another application is really Quite often, sports broadcasting are showed multiple games at the same time on the same evening. Right. And you're watching so your several games are on at the same time, you can only watch one at a time. Correct. However, you're watching your favorite team, but you want to know what's going on in the championship. And here we've got an application that we call ZapFoot, where you're watching your favorite team, and all of a sudden you're going to have an icon here on the top right mm -hmm. corner saying, hey, there's something happening on the other game. One click away, I just press click OK on the remote control. I'm looking at the other game. I can see the action on that other game. And now I'm one click away again to going back to my favorite okay, game. Now, when you say it tells you something is happening, so this is sort of context sensitive. It knows somebody just scored a goal or something, and it alerts you that there's been some good action in another game? Correct. There mm. is a, actually a little trick here, which is that all the videos are delayed by 30 seconds in the head end. What you watch in your living room is actually live plus 30 seconds, okay. so that if you're not watching that channel, give us 30 seconds to send you a message to let you know that there is something happening. So the box happening. is able to know that something cool happened that you might be interested in. All right, so what else can you do with this? I think other interesting application, back to navigation, and that's something we've done on cable network, is video on demand. From that splash screen, again, you can get access to a video on demand mm -hmm. offering. Traditional uh, long-weighted application, browse the genre, go to a specific genre, browse the catalog offering, pick up a movie, buy the movie, mm -hmm. and then get started. Right. That's something which is, which is uh, probably one of the killer applications uh, coming uh, into the Now, you also US. have the ability, actually, to buy music off here, too, don't you? Correct. Another example is something we did with a music channel, where here you're watching a video clip, and you've got that icon saying, well, do you want to purchase that CD? 
one click away, you go to that application, you've got the video quarter screen over there, and on the left hand side are the list of the titles available on that yeah. specific CD. And again, bringing entertainment one dimension further yeah. than traditional TV, I can pick up any of these titles. For example, I go to title number nine, paying the cost to be the boss, press the OK button, and now I'm listening to that specific Actually, song. So if I'm watching, say, an MTV and I like it, I can go buy the CD right then and there. That's the next step. Once you've sampled a few songs on that specific CD, uh -huh. just go to the buy icon, press OK, yeah. enter your pin code that protects your electronic wallet. Same You're idea. one click away from actually buying yeah. that specific And We don't wallet. have time to show it all, but you also have games you can play and like discount coupons that would come out and all that kind of stuff, huh? Everything integrated on one yeah. single set-top box, which is really the trick to enable ITV yeah. on the large scale. All right, it's Canal Plus technologies, and we'll see that, I guess, with some cable systems also. Coming very soon to the U.S. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. All right, well, there's another side to this PC TV story, watching TV on your computer. We'll show you that when we come back. While a lot of internet functionality is moving to the television set, an equally big change is television-style entertainment moving to the internet and your PC. Here to show us that side of the equation is Jeff Hupperts of ClearBand. How are you doing, Jeff? Very good, thank you. Okay, let me ask you, why would I want to watch TV on my computer? My past experience is that's been a pretty clunky experience. And that's probably more because of the technology and the, the quality of the video than whether or not people want to actually watch it on their PC. We, we all live very busy lives today, mm -hmm. and we have la very limited amount of time. So we are spending more and more time on the PC to do work, to do email, to surf the internet. And at the same time, I may not want to miss my favorite programs, right. sports, movies, news. Uh, okay, the, the difference is, too, you're not just using the internet. You're really using a special system that sits inside my broadband internet provider, correct? That's right. Our system is delivered by a cable operator or a DSL operator as a service. Okay. And there's no new hardware or software needed to right. be installed by And the again, this is not like going out and buying a TV card and sticking it in a slot. This is not what you're doing. Exactly right. This is extremely easy for the subscriber to do. They simply go to the correct website that's provided by their internet uh, or mm -hmm. their, their broadband service provider, such as a cable or DSL operator, and they simply point to the channel that they're interested in watching. Let's say I want to watch my okay. favorite program, Survivor. And once I click on that, just in a few moments, I'm able to watch live my favorite programming. All right, so this is TV being sent through my broadband internet provider. Exactly right. And the subscriber has full control over the window. They can uh, shrink it down or enlarge it to whatever size they want. Right, now, given this is all digital, can I watch two channels or three channels at the same time? Yes, you can, absolutely. So the subscriber can simply click on another channel that they're interested. Let's say they are interested in watching uh, the news and mm -hmm. what's going on in financially right now. They click on CNBC, and now I can watch uh, CNBC live. Right. Um, if I wanted to bring up even another channel, for example, and watch three channels simultaneously, I could uh, click on, uh, let's say, my football game is going on right now. So I could do that now. Wow. Or in this case, actually, it looks like there's a uh, racing yeah, yeah, going on huh. right now. And if I want to focus on a particular program, I can make that full right, screen right. and have a TV experience. And also, I mean, this is inside the computer, so you could be working, theoretically, doing your email, doing your spreadsheet, or whatever at the same exactly time. Exactly right. So if I'm a, a financial analyst, let's say, I could bring up my spreadsheet here. Mm -hmm. I have to clean up my keep screen a little bit here. There. I know, it's a challenge. Too much but on. So then yeah, I could sure. uh, work on my spreadsheet while I'm, for example, monitoring the financial news. I want to ask about the, the EPG, the Electronic Program Guide aspects of this, because I assume since you're on the Internet here, uh, and that, that little grid you brought up, I mean, we have the ability to drill down and find out information about programs at the same time as we saw in the other examples. Exactly right. So I can uh, go in the future here, take a look at what's going on in the future. I can get click on the details of a program and find out what's, uh, what's on. Mm -hmm. um, I can also have other future capabilities, such as reporting that program to the hard disk uh -huh. if that's enabled by the service provider and the copyright holder. Sure, sure. Uh, now, once again, let me ask you, this is, this is all cool stuff, but I don't see it anywhere. I mean, where, where will this be available and when will it be available? It's uh, being trialed right now by several leading cable operators, uh -huh. including Comcast, for example, in the Philadelphia area. Mm -hmm. And again, the, the advantage is that I can work and do all this other stuff at the same time. The theory is I'm at my computer doing stuff and I want the TV functionality brought in there. Exactly right. It lets you do what you want on the screen where you want. Yeah. 
So this is interactive TV. Instead of bringing in the interactivity to the TV, you're bringing the TV to the computer environment. Exactly, and it really shouldn't matter for the sure. individual homeowner. Okay, what thanks a lot, Jeff. You're very welcome. All right, Thank that's you. it for our look at the PC TV battle. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week. Don't go away. Now for my pick of the week. We're all mobile these days, carrying around a PDA, even a collapsible keyboard, but every now and then you really need something on paper. You've no doubt seen small portable printers before designed to work with laptop computers, but up until now, no one has come out with a printer designed specifically for a PDA. Well, how's this for a portable printer? You can put it in your pocket. It weighs only 14 ounces, including batteries, it communicates with your PDA via the infrared port, so no need to carry around cables. This is it. It also uses thermal print technology, so no ink cartridges, no ribbons. Obviously, it does use small paper, either these sheets, which are four by five and a half, or rolled paper, also about four inches wide. But when all you need to print out is your schedule for the day or some key contact numbers or notes for a meeting, you don't need eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. This little printer will also work with a laptop computer, and if you don't have an IR port, it does come with a serial cable. Setup is very easy. Just load the print driver into your computer. It automatically dumps over to your Palm Pilot or your handspring visor the next time you do a hot sink. It is the Pocket Printer A6 from a company called Cypix. Street price under $150. That's it for this week's edition of the Computer Chronicles. Thanks so much for joining us. If you have any questions about anything you saw on this week's show, please go to our website at computerchronicles.org. Hope we'll see you here again next week. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by PC to PC, the online computer migration service from PC First, moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one. Additional support is provided by Upside Events, presenting the Digital Lifestyle Revolution Conference, where people and technology intersect. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, Call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic.